Hi, this is Stephanie Basking in the Blues, and it's my great honor today to have I've kidnapped Kid Anderson. He's in my car, which is the most exciting. Help. <laughs> so, uh, so today we are going to be talking. We're in our Christmas hats, so we're in the Yule tide, the Yule. Uh, Christmas uh, spirit and we are going to be listening to Kid Anderson's Christmas CD and this is such a fun CD and how did you get all these people I mean there are so many people Alvin Bishop Scott Brenton Peter Brown June Cor, Ruth Davis Rick Estrin uh, Lorenzo Allen Hanson hey. Yo Kime he's Rusty's got to be in. Rusty Zinn, yeah, James, John Namath, John Namath, Paul Osher, just Mark Hummel, fabulous team. How did you hurt all those cats? Uh, well, I, I knew all those guys, so uh, it was just, uh, just a matter you know, of actually, getting matter of fact, in. a lot of them during this year, they would come through my studio and I'd be like, hey, uh, got this Christmas CD I'm making, can you, you know, join me on a song? What a fun CD. But before we do that and talk a little bit more about you, we're going to be giving away five CDs. This CD here, which is Kid Anderson Greaseland CD. The first five people that write on my Facebook wall, free CD, please, and then contact me with your address. You get free CD. Well, let me write on that right now. <laughs> you got enough. And then your beautiful wife, Lisa, who has a amazing voice. This. Tell me a little bit about this CD. Well, that's a. Uh... This is Lisa's Christmas CD. I can't find any more of mine. They're all back in Norway, yes. where I often frequent at Christmas time. <clears throat> um, but we do have Lisa's Christmas yeah. CD, which is great. And they actually go for, uh, I bought mine for like 49 bucks on eBay, because they were out of print and they were very hard to get. Wow, so, so. the first five people, <laughs> that so there's 10 people total. I've seen CD. them as much as $80 on eBay. For yes. Lisa's CD. So that's a free CD. So that's our giveaway. That's the first time I'm going to do that. So that's really great. I have all these CDs back here. Tis the season. It's the season to give away. Okay, a little bit about you, my dear friend, kid. Um, I've just been into the blues scene about a year. We met about a year ago. Yeah. And uh, I heard you were from Norway, so we snuck at the Norsk Abotil, so they were Shempiku. Little bit. But you're from a small town near Natoden, which has the Blues Festival, right? Uh, yes. And I'm you... from a town that uh, people in Norway haven't even heard of. What is it? You, you it's called Herre. Herre? It's pronounced like... Uh, Herre. Well, it's pronounced just the way I just uh, said it, but uh, <laughs> it's uh, spelled like hair. With uh, like... Uh, it's actually spelled like the Nelly... Was that Nelly or... And who had... It's hey, getting that, hot in here. Yeah. We had hair with two R's. It spelled awesome. like that. Anyways, it means Lord. Lord. Oh, or I gentleman. Like a Lord gentleman. Well, yeah. That's very appropriate for you. Yes. Yeah, I lived in Kongsberg, fitting, so yeah. that was very near to Notodden as well. And Notodden has a, a large blues festival every year. And when you were 11, you went and you got inspired. And that's kind of how you got into blues music. Right? Yeah, I started playing guitar when I was 11. And uh, actually, I saw a little clip from the Notodden Festival on, uh, on the TV at my grandma's house. And, and it was, uh, I, th I think it was Robert Cray uh, yeah. band. Robert it, Cray, they, they just shuffled. Did, yeah, yeah. They were doing, just playing some blues for, and it was like, ten, I don't know how long the clip was. Uh, I can still remember it, though. You know, it was like probably 10 seconds long. But, it was just so cool, you know, seeing him and Richard Cousins, the bass player, uh, brother of Butch Cousins, and uh, you were and just gone after that. You're yeah, just I just saw that guy. That just, the groove sounded so cool, and those guys looked so cool. I just got, you yeah. know, fascinated with that. And then I saw Steve Ray Vaughan on TV, <gasps> yeah. the unplugged thing, and so I already been playing a little guitar, so so I just got into blues, and I uh, met this guy who. Uh, who is a great blues guitar player from Notum, and he started giving me guitar lessons, and he turned me on to all the old, you know, the old stuff. Uh, B.B. King and Little yeah, Wolf, Howland Wolf. All know, that stuff, all just, that just stuff. within the first couple of lessons, he would just give me a stack of records, and I'd take them home, and I would uh, double them onto cassette tape, you know, and, and I would listen to that stuff just over and over again, so it's completely ingrained in my brain. 
That's great that you were inspired in Norway to play the blues, which is traditionally thought of, as I've been reading all my historical books and making notes. I mean, it's American Negro music originally, um, and then it sort of migrated from folk music to the blues. Um, <coughs> I, I first saw Chris Kane at the Poor House Bistro, and I was gone after that. I mean, I couldn't stop listening to the music. It just really inspired me. Yeah, Chris so, is awesome. He was awesome. Yeah. Um, we'll do that to you. There's a great interview of you with uh, Kaluna Blues Rock, so I'm going to put that link as well so people can um, listen to more historical stuff. But one of the things is in this area, your name comes up over and over again. So I just wanted to acknowledge and well, thank you <laughs> for all the work that you do with the musicians and bringing them together. And not just doing that, but producing music that sounds really wonderful. So I want to acknowledge that and thank you for that. And of course you did get nominated today. I read that um, for the American Blues so, Instrumentalist Guitar, right? On the, yeah, the, uh, blues found, the Blues Music Awards, yeah. formerly WC Handy Awards. Yeah, that's really, and, and I'm so glad that they are honoring you because you are well deserving of it. But well, thank you for all the work you do with the musicians. And that brings me to the fact that that's I've We got all that, so that's good. Let's see. Maybe I hit it just briefly. There we go. No, it's still going. Six minutes, 42. Hey, that was a little break there. Yeah. We're still going. We're back. We're back. Um, you said in the interview, and I wanted to, to just talk a little bit about this, about uh, the sound. And you got a little frustrated with the um, you know, recording and the sound, so you started doing it yourself. So uh, that's kind of what inspired you to do it. Why? I've listened to probably 100 CDs this year so far, and some of them just suck. I mean, they're really bad in the production of the sound. So tell me a little bit about producing here at Greaseland and well, the um, sound. I, mean, I, I started, you know, I've always been interested in every facet, you know, of, of making music. And, and, uh, and um, I started making my own records and, and stuff. I, you know, I would, hire, I would hire engineers and I realized, you know, they got paid by the hour. Uh, the more time they, the more time they wasted, the more money they made. What I realized, you know, it's, <laughs> it's, isn't that true? So yeah. this is going to take 14 hours at least. Yeah. So you know, so part I, of the motivation was you know, just gradually. That. I just got to where, like, you know, I'll just, you know, I'll do it myself and, and uh, figure it out. Okay. You know, you got to have the, you know, you got to have the, the vision, the sound up here mm -hmm. before you can get it out there. You know, so you got to have, you know, you got to learn the skills to, you know what all the knobs do as they say you know but um uh, but uh, I uh yeah I, I, I would help people you know mix records because I, I, I don't like stuff that sounds real sterile and boring and dull and flat and and uh, you know and always I uh, you know, like stuff that just sounds awful um there and, is some some bad production out there right? especially with the harmonicas I find that the harmonicas are the hardest to From the really Latin of to do harm. <laughs> to do harm. Is that really true? No. Oh <laughs> you made up stuff. That happens to me all the time with Oculus. Or maybe it is. I don't, I don't speak Latin. It should be. It should be. Um, but one of the other problems I found... Some you know, of my best friends are harmonica players. Yes, we love you harmonica players. They're a necessity, right? They're a necessity. I don't know about that. So one of the things I have found in my little adventure here is I like to get music out here. That's why I'm doing the basking in the blues, is just to get artists and music out there. How how hard is it to distribute CDs and, and getting the music out there and heard? I mean, you make the CDs, but then what about the distribution? You guys have distribution channels, or is that just... is not my department. Right. That's uh, that's I don't get involved. As, I mean, as much as I can, I, I stay away from that. That's, you know, going to the post office, talking to people, you know, kissing, That's people, what I do. kissing people's ass, and you know, hey, play my CD or get it, you know, get out. <laughs> not, not interested. 
So I mean, I just I do the creative thing. I make I make the music. I facilitate the making of the music, and I try and improve the making of the music. That's great. And and um, that's that's what I'm interested in. And I you know I, I I see that all the way to completion. But you know, like I don't print CDs. I, I, I have I, I'll burn CDs and CD master, but I don't manufacture CDs, and I don't play record label, even though I do use the name Griesland Records. Um, I like Griesland. Because Land. it sounds cool. It does. It sounds cool. And whenever I pick one up, it's like people have been at Griesland. Your name's always on there. So it's like, Kid Anderson, Kid Anderson, it says three great. What are you working on right now? What project are you working on? Well, we'll see right now. Um, I just had a... You're so cool. Thank you. <laughs> Got our little balls on. Who are you, who are you recording with right now? Um... Well, I just finished a CD with a singer from Austin named Travis Green, who, oh, nice. whom I had never uh, met before, but Mike Shermer introduced us, and this guy was really talented. And that was actually more like Americana, um, you know, blues influence, but also some like uh, Tex-Mex rock and roll and, and, and country cool. sounding stuff. And I'm working on a CD with uh, Terry O'Dobby. Oh, which, I love her. I did her it's song. It's turning out really great. She is really an awesome singer. I'm very excited about yeah. that. I'm uh, thinking, you know, making another one with uh, Willie Walker. We've been making another one with Rick Estrin coming soon. Right. Aki and Kumar got two CDs in the making that we're going to start. Right. Doing. And in the spring, uh, isn't Rocket Johnny is, might be coming out? In, in like yeah. Some tracks He's with coming out. I'm, 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 I should have took notes because uh, I'm, I'm, I'm working. I'm always working on a lot of CDs at, at, at the same time. I know, it's amazing. It's amazing. You do such great work. Um, one last question, uh, because That's I don't want to... Well, you know, yeah, we can talk forever, but, you yeah. know, yeah, let's just keep talking. Let's have a cigarette and well, keep talking. Maybe, maybe it's a long <laughs> question. Uh, let's see. Why isn't there more original material? Why aren't people writing more original material? Or do you think that there's a lack of original material out there? Well, I don't know think there's a well uh, that's a good question <laughs> I, I don't, that's a good question yeah, well, I'd like well, to see more uh, original it's material. a hard question yeah, it is. to it's answer anyways. well John Lawton he he does a lot of original material he does a, uh, Rick Estrin I mean Rick is the, you yeah know, the, he's that is you know a top-notch songwriter and he puts out original material that doesn't suck that yeah. you know and there's a there's a lot of um, you know, it's it's hard to, you know what? It's very hard to write something original in blues. That's, Why that's is that? Do well, you think? because the you know the, the 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 musical language of the blues has been pretty you know de determined. I mean, there's always room for expansion in right. whatever way, but there's only you know there's only certain things that to me sound right in in blues. You know and uh, and there's not many, very many who can like transcend that or, or get around that, you know. So you, you either, you know, you have a lot of people ending up with, you know, just not doing originals, just doing covers, or doing originals that just, you know, sound like some other song or just are completely meh. Yeah. And then you got people who try really hard tr to do something different and original, and it just sounds like they're trying too hard. Yeah. Uh, but there's some guys like, uh, Actually, Alabama Mike, that guy, to me, writes some really cool stuff. I mean, he uh, we actually we got we made a I made a record with him that is it's killer, and um, it's got Jerry Jamot, uh, Derek Martin, uh, Jim Pugh, uh, Alki Kumar, uh, all them guys on it, yeah. and um, Ronnie Smith, uh, John Lawton was on John. it. Little John. Yeah, Little Johnny. There's Little John. There's and Big Bob John Welsh. And Bob Welsh too. Johnny Cat. And I love all the names. You know, that's one of the things I'm really enjoying well, in this name, book. Because, all the hey, names. you doesn't always cut it, you know, especially <laughs> in the crowd. Um, no, it does But not. Uh, what I was going to say about Alabama Mike is that he's written some new songs, and he uses you know words and subject matters that you don't really hear in traditional blues, and Where's he if, from? If, is he in this area, or is he? Yeah, yeah, he's in this area. I'm gonna have to find him. Oh yeah, no, you gotta check out him. Alabama Mike. Yeah, he I want to interview him too. Yeah, um, 
and he he's got a song called Identity Theft, and it's it's like it's hilarious and badass at the same time. And he just he just has to me this way of writing, uh, you know, writing about you know modern stuff, but it's just but just sounding he just comes across very authentic. Yeah. You know, and and it's it's uh, it's funny, and it's genuine yeah. you know and, and it's and, it, and it's Alabama really Mike. cool at the same time Alabama Mike he's got some new uh, he didn't get his album out in time for the BMAs and stuff oh, this year but, yeah, but it was just year. good because there was a lot of I had a lot of the records in there and, and, and he deserves special attention to Alabama Mike so yeah, he, he's going to be coming out with that that next year and that's a really uh, that's something I'm really proud of that's great yeah my one of my most memorable moments this year was when I, Henry Gray was here oh, cutting yeah. his CD here with you guys and I'm executive producing it but I was here and everybody was out of the room and it was just me and Henry and he sat and sang me a song and played it on piano Yeah. and then he kissed me at the end <laughs> and it I went that to wow me. that's like blues heaven so after that I was just gone and um, so we're looking forward to that one being released oh, yes. in the spring. Oh, that was after. a real honor for me too. Yeah, it was an honor to have him here, and and that's just the thing is you're keeping a tradition alive, and um, it's just everybody just enjoys coming here and doing Greaseland, and and so that's just a real joy and gift to all of us really. We appreciate it. Damn right. Okay, so we're gonna snacklip norsk no. Okay. So uh, we we will hear all okay of the no, yeah okay. <laughs> Oliver Nemayo is in Norge from Kongsberg, also uh, Nesodden. Uh, Oliver Nedar, also uh, Jostein. Jostein? Yeah. Hi, Jostein. We uh, hey. shout out there. And uh, we hope uh, that we come to Nesodden Blues Festival next August. That's the 4th through the 7th. I don't know how to say that in Norwegian. Fjärre till sjunde. Fjärre till sjunde. Okay, in August. So we hope we see all the Norsk Benedar. Can you snack a bit Norsk to Benedar in Norway? Um, yeah. Yeah, for say hello from California, and we wish you good year to all of us. Yeah, good year. And come here with a little tour in Norway. Yeah. Good year. So if there are some who have some special jobs, but uh, 28 December, so I am for so much ready. Up on Nitters Aften. Um. <laughs> Uh, I just uh, I just been been uh, yes. Great. That, that's all. I just told them I needed a gig when I yeah. go back there. Yeah. After Christmas. Okay. Um. So we. Well, you know you speak Norwegian. <laughs> Fine. <laughs> <laughs> so we are going to do track twelve, Whiskey Head Buddies, because I love Alvin Bishop. I just love him. But I'm going to stop it here, the interview, and record the song separately right. well, I should, because I this I is. Say something minutes. about it. Okay, oh. hold on. We're going to do it now. So, wait. 